you look at food packaging, you've probably noticed that in addition to the usual nutrition claims, many of them are also now labeled low GI. What is GI? Well, the glycemic index is a measure of how quickly blood sugar, or more technically blood glucose, rises after eating particular foods. But so what? Are lower GI foods healthier? Will they help you to lose weight? And what dietary changes should we make if we want to lower the GI of the foods we eat? Hi, I'm Dr. Joe, PhD nutritionist, professional speaker, and author of several books, including Reboot, How to Power Up Your Energy, Focus, and Productivity. And today I'm here to give you the scoop about the glycemic index. First, some of the benefits. Low GI foods lower fasting glucose and insulin levels, which might help people with diabetes. But they also might help people who experience reactive hypoglycemia, or low blood glucose. Lower GI foods may also help increase satiety. In other words, help to make us feel full longer, which may then help us to better manage our body fat. Here are a couple of important facts to help you understand the glycemic index. The glycemic index only refers to foods that contain carbohydrates. That's because only carbohydrates break down into glucose. So when we talk about the glycemic index, we're only talking about foods that contain carbohydrates, like grains and beans, milk and yogurt, fruits and veggies, sugars and sugary desserts. So when people say that meat and oil are low glycemic, that's not really accurate. They don't even have carbohydrates, so the glycemic index doesn't apply to them. So let's not throw out all carbohydrates in an attempt to lower the glycemic index because so many carbohydrates are healthy. The glucose from the carbs is fuel for our body. It's what our brain runs on. And when we exercise, we burn a large percent of our fuel needs from carbohydrates. In addition, carbs are rich in nutrients you just can't find in other foods, like fiber and certain vitamins and minerals. Here's how scientists came up with glycemic index. After you eat, foods containing carbohydrates get digested in your gut into tiny glucose molecules, which are then small enough to pass into the bloodstream. But in order for glucose to get into the cells, we need insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas. The higher the glucose, the more insulin your pancreas secretes. All of this happens within two hours after eating carbohydrates. But not all carbs take the full two hours. Some are absorbed much faster than that. So the glycemic index was designed to rate how quickly equal amounts of carbohydrates are absorbed. Typically, a scale of 0 to 100 is used with white bread having a score of 100. Low GI foods are absorbed slowly, taking perhaps the full two hours. So the blood glucose levels don't rise too high, giving you a full two hours worth of its energy. Medium GI foods take about an hour. And high GI foods are absorbed quickly in about 30 minutes or even less, so that blood glucose spikes higher. A higher blood glucose requires more insulin to be secreted, which may be an issue for people who have diabetes whose insulin secretion tend to be a little bit more sluggish, at least in the earlier stages. Other people, when confronted with a high glucose load, might over-secrete insulin, causing the blood sugar to drop too low afterwards, resulting in what we call reactive hypoglycemia. So what's in each list? Well, high glycemic index foods include breads, rice, and processed cereal, but also some fruits and vegetables like watermelon, ripened bananas, and potatoes. You'll also notice that desserts and fluid replacement beverages like Gatorade and Powerade fit into this category. Foods in the medium glycemic index list consist of some fruits like berries, orange, and grapes. Both fruit juice and sodas are in this category. Then you'll also find pasta, whole grains, and vegetables including sweet potatoes and carrots. Most other fruits and vegetables not listed previously fall into the low glycemic foods list. Also, milk and yogurt, beans, hummus, and quinoa, nuts and nut butters, and even treats like chocolate, popcorn, and ice cream. If you want to dive into this even deeper, 
you can go to glycemicindex.com. Now, if you're watching your glycemic index, please, please don't just eat the low glycemic index foods and skip the others. First of all, you're missing out on a lot of healthy foods. Secondly, avoiding those foods is totally unnecessary. See, the glycemic index is not an exact science. Much of the glycemic response you get from foods depend on how much of that food you're eating, what else you're eating it with, and specifics such as how the food was prepared and cooked and oh, so much more. So that's what I'll be covering in part two of this series of the glycemic index. This is Dr. Joe, professional speaker and author of Reboot. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then pick up a copy of my book, Reboot.